It would seem that RockShox is holding nothing back today. This isn't an incremental update to a singular model. This is a full steam ahead revamp of the trail all mountain enduro line that includes three forks and four rear shocks. Vital has noticed a deafening absence of RockShox products from our test bikes this past year, and we have to wonder if this revision was in any way related. Right or wrong, we will say that after spending a couple of weeks riding the new line, RockShox is about to make a whole lot of noise. Meet the all-new Pike, Lyric, Zeb, and Super Deluxe families. We say it often, and this time we really mean it. For a more in-depth look at the new line, including the Deluxe Shock family and all of the updates, you have to head to vitalmtb.com and read our article. This is just a high-elevation overview. When RockShox launched Flight Attendant last October, it seemed to be a show of force, a display of what could be done with electric integration to suspension. Robots aside, we did make note of several new technologies we could only assume would be making their way down the line. Buttercups, bleed ports, and a new arch design for the Lyric and Pike were all readily apparent. The timeline and execution were not. Vital took possession of a new 160mm Travel Lyric Ultimate and Super Deluxe Ultimate to mount on our high tower test mule. Additionally, RockShox provided us with a new Mega Tower equipped with a 170mm Zeb Ultimate and Super Deluxe Coil Ultimate, as well as a Stump Jumper with a Pike Ultimate and Super Deluxe Ultimate. Let's start by taking a look at the lineup of forks and what makes them new. Aesthetically, the update to the Pike and Lyric are easy to discern. With a more muscly set of lowers, it's readily apparent both of these forks hit the gym. Indeed, RockShox states that the Lyric is now 20% more torsionally stiff and the Pike is 13.5% stiffer. The entire line did manage to lose a little bit of weight too, even with the addition of those buttercups. We saw them on Flight Attendant and they've been on competing brands for some time. RockShox now has pressure relief valve on the lower of the Pike, Lyric, and Zeb. Throughout many rides that saw 3,000 to 4,000 feet in elevation change, our test forks had plenty of burping to perform. Model year 2023 is more than an update though, so let's get into the guts. RockShox is bringing a new damper to the trail. The Charger 3 uses an internal floating piston, or IFP, rather than a bladder system found in the prior design. No more bleeding your damper. The aluminum body has an overflow port for excess oil. RockShox is stating the new charger design isolates high-speed and low-speed compression damping such that one does not affect the other. By running two isolated circuits, riders can make more predictable adjustments. High-speed compression has five clicks of adjustment. It comes set in the middle, zero position. From there, riders can move two clicks in either direction. RockShox is calling the move from zero to either plus one, plus two, or minus one, minus two. Low-speed compression has 15 clicks of adjustment. Again, the tuning principle is to start in the middle and move in either direction of the plus or minus by seven clicks. RockShox states and Vital will confirm that the new Charger 3 is completely silent in going about its business. There are no squishing or sucking noises going on. We look forward to seeing if this stays true throughout the summer and while we are messing around with the clickers. RockShox made some adjustments with the positive and negative air chambers as well as moving the dimple. The technology of the new Debonair Plus air spring isn't explicit, but the claim is what every rider wants to hear. More supple off the top with improved mid-stroke support. Sound familiar? We'll save the ride impressions for later, but we'll state that RockShox claims are not bogus, even without tokens. Buttercups are interesting in that the theory or execution is not revolutionary. Rather, it exists in products all around us. RockShox even cites rubber-mounted chainsaw handles. What is new is their application to mountain bike suspension. Buttercups are rubber pucks housed in gold-colored body that is used at the mounting interface at the base of the fork. Their purpose is to absorb high-frequency trail chatter that all too often saps riders' energy and causes hands to fatigue. RockShox points to piles of data acquisition and analysis, citing a 20% reduction in transmitted trail chatter. The design moves only in a vertical motion, not orbital or fore-aft, and, in theory, makes some sense. In all, they do create a nominal weight penalty of 39 grams total. It was not enough that RockShox fully revamped three forks. It is also launching a new Super Deluxe and Deluxe family of rear shocks. As we saw with the Charger 3, the new RC2T damper on the rear shock makes use of independent high- and low-speed compression circuits, each with five clicks of adjustment. 
Again, these systems are tuned via a middle from zero setting. From that middle setting, riders will have two clicks in either direction to adjust both high and low speed compression. Riders can head to RockShox for tuning tips and set up to get started. In a move to provide more tuning options, RockShox has incorporated a hydraulic bottom out, or HBO, into selected super deluxe shocks. Bike brands will determine which of their designs will benefit from this feature, so not every 2023 bike with a RockShox will sport an HBO. RockShox states that its HBO impacts the last 20% of travel to provide increased compression damping and reduced harsh bottom outs. The intent is to allow riders to use fewer bottomless tokens in the rear shock to provide a more supple ride while still offering bottom out resistance. The Super Deluxe Coil Shocks have a small purple dial that allows riders to adjust the HBO. Super Deluxe Air Shocks do not have an adjustable HBO. It is fixed from the factory. We will dig in later with ride impressions, but the Super Deluxe Air and Coil are available with a linear or progressive rebound tune. It is up to the frame designer as to what comes stock, but it does merit noting this feature. In essence, the progressive rebound reacts to shaft speed. The faster the speed, the more rebound damping is generated toward the end of the return stroke. This progressive tune reduces the potential for top out and for a rider getting huckabucked off lips and large compressions. To go further in depth with what is offered at each tier of fork and shock, please do head to Vital MTB to read the full article. We also touch on what is new for the deluxe shock family. Our test bikes were ridden in the Sierras around Reno, Nevada and Truckee, California as well as in the Lost Sierra around Quincy, California. Temps ranged from the mid-80s to mid-50s Fahrenheit. Soil conditions were anything from dreamy to fully blown. We did a lot of climbing and a lot of varied descending on all types of trails. Flow trails, high-speed runs, brake scorchers, and rock punting all played a role in how we evaluated the different suspension units. Elevation changes were evident with rides starting in the 4,800 to 5,000 foot range and topping out just below the 8,000 foot range. In setting up our suspension, we used the air chart on the fork lowers to set up pressures for our body weight. Compression setup for all three forks was set in the neutral zero position. Because we already had the Super Deluxe Air going on the high tower, we pulled the air unit from the Mega Tower and put on the Super Deluxe Coil. All three shocks, high tower, Mega Tower, and Stump Jumper, were set to 30% sag with compression clicks in the middle. Riders will be able to make use of the Trailhead app provided by RockShox to assist with this initial setup process. Despite being three different suspension forks aimed at three different types of riding, the Pike, Lyric, and Zeb all share the same technologies. To that end, much of our riding feedback echoes or is redundant across each model. To that end, we will speak to the forks on the whole. In each instance and using the same test loop for those first rides, the small bump absorption was outstanding. As we felt with the flight attendant fork, we took in a marked improvement in the ride quality via those buttercups. Of the things we took immediate note of, one element stood out most, landing. We would later learn this is what RockShox would call touchdown feel. Evidently, it is something they worked very hard on to improve. We could best describe it as landing without the feeling of landing. After small punts or trail features when returning to the ground, our fork would land with the softest sensation we would deem reasonable. Right away, we knew RockShox had something really cool going on. Regardless of the incredible trail feel on those first rides, we felt the Zeb and Lyric were a tad too planted. Not yet knowing of the new Debonair Plus Spring, we simply reached for another token in each fork. The Zeb 170 ships with one token installed, so we installed a second. We were shocked to see zero in our Lyric. Assuming that was a mistake, we tossed one in there. Traditionally, we run two to three in both of those forks. So by our estimate, we were being conservative. We did achieve more pop from our forks though, so all was correct in our minds. RockShox would clear this up for us and show the error of our ways a few days later. The performance of our rear shocks, both air and coil, was fantastic right out of the gate. With correct sag and neutral compression settings, our bikes had that sweet spot of stability without being overly glued. In playing with the rebound, we were able to create a very planted feel that did not pack up in chattery or mid-sized rocks. Our high tower used the Super Deluxe Ultimate with the hydraulic bottom out. We will confirm that despite having the fun ring augered to the bottom of the shock, we never felt it hit bottom. Our rear shock also utilized a progressive rebound tune to help settle down the return stroke after large compressions. 
coming directly from the prior Super Deluxe Ultimate, which was stock on our high tower, the incorporation of the HBO and Progressive Rebound and Castled Internal Bottom Out Bumper created immediate, noticeable improvements in overall ride quality. After a bit of time with our new forks and shocks, and just before launch, Chris Mandel of Rock Shocks came out to meet up with us and go through the new line. Additionally, we set up some shuttle laps so we could do back-to-back -back testing and tuning. Time and logistics meant that we would focus primarily on the Mega Tower with its Zeb and Super Deluxe Ultimate Coil. The lessons learned, however, are applicable across the entire line. After a couple of laps, we noticed that the touchdown feel on our Zeb was not as prominent as with the Lyric. Evaluating the terrain we were riding and how we were riding it, Chris cited that we should be bottoming out the Zeb, but we were not. Informing him of our two tokens, the first order of business was to ditch one. This is like not your not your last Zeb. Like yeah. the air spring is totally different in terms of like shape and force at bottom out is like not terribly dissimilar, but you're doing so much you're doing so many things differently before you get to bottom out on this fork versus the previous version of the fork mm -hmm. in terms of like how much energy the damper is scrubbing um, and then like where the air spring is giving you pushback mm -hmm. that you don't want to like jump to the settings that you had previously. If you don't mind, maybe like reset you to one token. That's what we're then, here for. Yeah. 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 more fork travel yeah um, yeah so we made the air spring change in terms of reducing your air pressure and then we went back to the stock token mount and we're using more travel um, we could consider pulling a little bit more out to get a little bit more travel but it sounded like we got the touchdown feel you were looking for on that one yeah so like at this point I'm like okay the fork is it tracks well through rough stuff getting a lot of good travel out of it um, I don't feel like there's, there aren't any situations there that are like, I feel like they're, at least where we ride here, there are more extreme areas where you'll really hit something big or come down something steep. And so the fact that I'm not like bottoming the fork out on this trail in this instance isn't, to me, isn't a red flag. Yep. Um, cause I don't feel like I'm not getting full travel and I am not feeling any bottom out sensations. So like to me, like this is this setting on this fork is something that like I could go out with and be like, all right, like I can manage all the situations. It it's not super glued, but it tracks well. It pops nicely, but it doesn't feel like a pogo stick. So I'm like, okay, cool. It it's that like that great that Venn diagram. Yeah, yeah. Window of happiness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. RockShox's new Debonair Plus Air Spring actually delivers on its grand promise of improved mid-stroke support. Coupled with the new damper and everything else new means that this is not the Zeb, Lyric, or Pike of yore. We were, in real time, learning that the 2023 is not a facelift. It is a new product. Via some air pressure, compression, and rebound tweaking, we arrived at a fork that tracked better, more effectively used its travel, and yet easily moved down the trail. Not everyone will have a professional from RockShox to correct the error of their ways. Take it from us. Don't just reach for those tokens. With the fork sorted, we set to the business of the rear shock. The Super Deluxe Ultimate Coil on our Mega Tower utilized the linear rebound tune. To us, the shock felt quite solid. We enjoyed the way in which it laid waste to rocks. It felt good overall, but it was not overwhelmingly different. Then we installed the progressive rebound coil shock. Rock Shock set us up with a rebound that was about one or two clicks faster than we would have run, but we trusted them anyway and dropped in. On this trail, there's a lot of like little areas to like build your speed and like little just like jumps that you just have to be precise with. You can overcook them. Um, and if you're not set up right, you can just flub them and just like case stuff. And what I noticed was the bike's ability to, to just be so level off of those. Cause sometimes when you push in a lot, if you're not set up properly, you can get a little huckabuck, yeah. zero huckabuck whatsoever. So like bike felt immensely leveled. And then like through like all like the mid stuff, like not, a lot of difference like initially i was just in my head i was like i don't know i'm gonna tell chris like this feels the same and then we got into like the little rhythms in the trail and things and i was like oh there it is okay yeah. that's different even having a parking lot feel that was like just a teensy bit fast on the trail it translated to 
it, it was dialed. Yep. So I would say like back to back runs, like I prefer this for me. Um, and especially like on this trail, like being faster, a lot of like mid-sized stuff and then a lot of compressions, the bike just felt more and more composed overall. It's, it's a bit of personal preference. It's a bit of like what the frame kinematics kind of drive, mm -hmm. but it really, um, you know, like if you were a, a Frenchie and you really wanted like everything to be wide open so you could just mouth through like rock gardens constantly, like the linear tune is gonna give you that like super open feel, quick return at every given moment. Um, whereas the progressive is like more stable, controlled at those higher shaft speeds. Um, and yeah, like really looking for like uh, exactly all the different feelings you're 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 pointing to there, but neither one of them compromising that like off the top um, fluttery feel. A progressive rebound tune may not make sense for every bike or every rider. For us, with this setup, we felt as if the shock had activated an autopilot mode. The degree of stability and comfort was unmatched. These are the moments where components really do enhance the ride and leave you feeling more confident and in control. Vital will be performing a long-term test of the Zeb, Lyric, and Super Deluxe shocks. During the coming months, we will be pulling more back-to-back -back laps to further evaluate the effects of high and low-speed compression adjustments, specific setup features, and the overall durability of the new RockShox line. For now, we are offering our initial impressions after several weeks of riding and expert tuning advice. So... Was the new RockShox line worth the wait? From where we sit, the answer is a resounding yes. The updates and impacts of the new suspension can be felt immediately on the trail. RockShox has delivered in spades and given riders an all new line of suspension that delivers remarkable control and performance right out of the box. Don't forget to hit our site for the more in-depth look and to join our vital community. Until next time, go ride your bike and wave to some strangers or something. Sasquatch. He's a Sasquatch. <laughs> He's gone. Where'd he go?